welcome 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 everyone one more time to another youth service we thank the lord for spreading our lives to be on this session another youth sunday it's just amazing and we have been discussing god's eternal plan for man and of course we're going to take a dive in god's word and just continue talking about god's plan for man what's that all about and so forth and no worries you'll be able to follow because god is just awesome at letting us understand his word where he's coming from and you'll be able to relate so let's pray along that line lord we give you glory this great morning or afternoon whatever time you are watching i pray lord you may have your way with each and everyone that is tuned in i pray you may speak to their hearts whatever situation circumstances relationship that they need answers for lord that seems to be a bother anything that is of concern to your people father i pray you may speak to them through your word cause a word to comfort them lord bring about an ease in their spirits and especially those who aren't saved lord cause them to really be convicted by your word speak to their hearts lord and pull them in father fill them up with your holy spirit lord because you see when they hear your word lord it pulls them and we are talking about god's eternal plan right hearing a word allows them to come into this plan you have for them discovering their purpose your will for their lives yes lord all this is awesome and this awesomeness is what you want us all to experience so thank you lord for your goodness thus far in this service lord and i pray that your anointing may continue to flow lord in jesus name amen 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 so god's eternal plan for man firstly i want to ask you a question did you know it was always father god's intention to live in man yes definitely and the thing is god had always desired a family after his own kind made his own in his own image and likeness and of course a creation that loves him dearly right so it is important to note we are not after thoughts right we are not after thoughts i just want you to remember that as we go throughout this message god has an eternal plan for each and every one of us let me repeat that god has an eternal plan for each and every one of us however we can only discover the plans god have for us right by being born again we have to see god right and this is how we come into god's purpose for our lives born by being reborn in christ hallelujah that born again experience and we'll hear more about that as we go along in this message and of course i want to bring up another question did you know that god knew satan would rebel against him and also that adam would actually sin right bringing the whole mankind into bondage bondage of sin and death hallelujah yes so of course god knew all of this because he's all powerful and we'll be exploring more along this line so satan surely did not know that god's plan to redeem man by rescuing mankind from sin had been set into motion before time so before time began god set his redemption plan in motion because he knew that mankind would go off course and disobey him and naturally as youths we have a lot of questions we hear this and certainly um we may be like yeah if god is omniscient 
right meaning he's all powerful you might wonder why did he even create satan or why did he not stop adam from disobeying him are those questions popping off in your minds if so god has answers for you this blessed morning or anytime you're watching two reasons i want to bring up two main reasons firstly the truth is that god wanted a family that was capable of loving him the way he loves us hallelujah all right and secondly he wanted children of his own kind he wanted children of his own kind it is important to know that and we are going to dive into the scriptures and really explore what this is all about i'm reminded of a song and um, it goes something like this i am redeemed but with a price jesus has changed my whole life yes i'm not a big sinner but you will even understand why i had to sing that song yeah just now let's go to ephesians chapter one and we are reading from verse three to six three to six all right so it's all about redemption in christ verse three it says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in christ hallelujah that 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 scripture reading it is just so exciting we can agree right that paul the apostle in ephesians here in this chapter is addressing the church the chosen ones the body of christ right and he was addressing the church at a place called ephesus and that's like in the middle east in a country called turkey right so he was writing to them and telling them just the mystery of christ right and we're going to dive more into it hallelujah so in other words he's saying the church the born again has access to all spiritual blessings so no spiritual blessing is off limits to the church Hallelujah. notice that the scripture is emphasizing spiritual blessings rather than worldly blessings or materialistic blessings you know a lot of times we major on cars and god giving us houses and all of these things but this scripture is really zooming on the fact that all spiritual blessings are available to the sons of god and verse 4 just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love yeah a question for you how is it that christ shows you to be a part of his family before he even made the world itself right how is that possible and to answer that question i won't give my opinion but we will let the bible do the talking and allow scripture to interpret scripture right so let's go to isaiah 46 reading from verse 9 to 10 and i'm reading from the amplified version so notice what verse 9 says it says remember carefully remember carefully the former things which i did from ages past and i must stick up in here god is speaking right god is speaking here so let me just read that over remember carefully the former things which i did 
from ages past. For I am God, and there is no one else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end and the result from the beginning. Right? So, God had already determined how everything would be. Let me continue reading the scripture. Declaring the end and the result from the beginning and from ancient times, the things which have not yet been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. So, based on the scripture, no. Based on the scripture, who are we to question the means by which God goes about accomplish, accomplishing his purpose, right? Getting what he wants. He wanted a family. He wanted his family to love him like how he loves them. You know, he wanted this family to worship and adore him. Hallelujah. And he wanted to, to just manifest himself through this family, right? Being his image and likeness. So God's plan was to establish a people that would be without sin. Right? The scripture says, holy and blameless. That's Ephesians 1 verse 4. It says, these people would be holy and blameless. These people would love God and love his people right so then and there we know that the love of god cannot be separated from the love of his people love of god is the love of people of his people all right and all this pleased god the love of god cannot be separated from the love of people i just i mentioned that and god is so powerful he is able to come up with a plan right in the realm of the spirit you come up with this plan work out the details of this plan right before actually setting it in motion here on earth in our realm in our world right that's how powerful this god is so when the scripture mentioned that god predetermined everything he planned out everything before the world began that's real right and only this omniscient, powerful God can do such meticulous, detailed planning. And we'll hear more about that as, as we go along. Here what verse 5 actually says, Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, Hallelujah, according to the good pleasure of his will, Verse 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. And let us look at, at that word in verse 5. That word, predestined, right, is such a very interesting word, predestined. And I took the initiative to just look up this word because it was so interesting and intriguing to me, right? In the Strong's Concordance. So predestined, it means to foreordain, right? To predetermine, mark out beforehand. Hallelujah. In other words, it is to establish in advance, to be set in stone, right? So God definitely planned out how everything would work out before time began his redemption plan remember mankind went off course and even before that he had this idea right he has this desire he wanted a family after his own heart after his own kind hallelujah so notice that the scripture mentioned we were predestined to be adopted we were predestined to be adopted let's explore 
another important word the scripture is mentioning here adopted for those of you who have been following the trail of this word yes you would have heard this word being mentioned so many times adoption the fact that we are adopted in the beloved and all of these nice um terminologies and so forth all right so let's zoom in on and that word adopted does it mean what you think it means or does it mean what god intended it right does it mean what god intended for it to mean all right let's discover that according to the according to the strong's concordance the true meaning of this word adopted right is derived from two greek words right and forgive my pronunciation i'm not sure if i'm about to pronounce these words correctly but the first word is tithemi right and let me just spell it for you it's t-i-t-h-e-m-i right and it means to place lay are set it's also translated using the words purpose and appointed and destined those are words you're familiar with so we're seeing how the pieces are connecting for those of you following and the second word that this word adopted is derived from the second greek word is hois again i'm not sure i'm pronouncing these words correctly but let me spell it for you it's h-u-i-o-s and it means a son and it even went on further to to really clarify what this this really means anyone sharing the same nature as their father the word emphasizes likeness of the believer to the heavenly father hallelujah notice that that phrase there anyone sharing the same nature as their father right so when it comes to this word adopted right being adopted into god's family means you were intentional right you were intentionally selected to be god's child as i said earlier you're no afterthought right you were meticulously planned to be reborn in earth right to manifest christ right god planned this out all right let's let's go further so i want to encourage you young people that your validation your validation comes from god because he made you right and he planned out everything to the t the the fact that god is speaking to your god is speaking to you right now right especially if you are not born again it means you would have been one of those ones that god chose from before time to be manifested so god wants you to listen this word and god wants you to obey this word become a part of his family right and he wants to know after you become a part of his family manifest some wonderful things through you his purpose he has some plans for you he has a will for you right and he wants to accomplish those by you know living in this body and just mingling with people blessing people and just doing wonderful things in the earth hallelujah oh so let's let's continue let's continue all this planning all this planning to the minute details by god proves he knew adam would mess up and the devil would place mankind under the bondage of sin so remember i mentioned that earlier that all of this is not new to god and it is not no backup plan we are not no backup plan we are no afterthoughts and let me further prove this right let me further prove how intentional 
God actually is by bringing you to the scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. All right. I hope you have a Bible and you're really following with me. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Let me read that over. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Now, if you look up the word Adam in the Strong's Concordance, you would see that Adam is described or said to be the first man, right? The, the, the father of mankind in, in terms of all of man came from Adam, right? We were all in the loins of Adam. Mankind came forth from Adam. All right, so he can be described as the parent of the human race. And notice in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45, he was described by the scripture as a living soul, right? And we know he would have been made in the image and likeness of Christ. Jesus Christ was called the second Adam in that scripture and that's very significant right this implies a new beginning and notice also the second adam's makeup was different right it was more so spiritual the scripture says he was a quickening spirit a quickening spirit and as i said it means is not of this world, right? Adam was a living soul, he was fleshy, he was earthy. But this quickening spirit is spiritual in nature. And we already established that God intended to have a family that can love as he loves. And the fact that this body was inspired by his body, what I mean by that is um, having eyes and ears and feet, and so forth this body was in, inspired by god right god wants to live in this body therefore god had to send forth jesus christ as the second adam the quickening spirit the spirit of adoption right so that of course as i've been saying the sons of God, the family of God, right? God's people can be manifested in the earth, can be reborn in the earth and do wonderful things, actually accomplish God's will in the earth. And let's go further into the scriptures, establishing what I just said, bringing more clarity, right? So you can understand Let's go to Romans 8, and we are interested in verse 28 through to verse 30. And for more of an explanation, right, to expound on certain points, we are going to read the Amplified Version, which says, And we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, right? To those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Hallelujah. Verse 29 says, For those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand. Right? So this scripture is literally just saying what I've been saying all along in this message, right? It's like summarizing a lot of the things I've been saying. He also predestined 
be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. All right. Verse 30. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, which means to declare free of guilt of sin. And those who, whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. And there's a scripture that says that the sons of God, the chosen ones, right? We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? So the scripture is going along the same line. So young people, God has a plan for you, right? God has a plan for me. God has a plan for each and every one of us, right? And he placed us here on earth for a reason, right? And it is to know him to know him, to know Christ, and to make him known. Hallelujah. So, the fact that you were predestined to be manifested in the earth, right? It means God has a plan for you, right? It means that he would have meticulously planned out everything from your birth until the stage you are now right if you as a youth you have discovered christ you are now a christian you have been born again then everything prayer to that born again experience would have been god pointing you in his direction if you grew up in a family that had one parent whether it be the father raised you or the mother or it may be a guardian, right? Then actually that is the best situation to bring you to Christ, right? That was God's plan for you, for you to find him. Maybe if you had both parents present, you would find God, right? So God ensured that he planned everything, circumstances, situations. He put people in your life that would lead you to him, right? He, he placed a pastor in your life. He placed someone that gave you an encouraging word time after time again, right? Even a child, causing that child to just see a profound line that totally change your life you began to think about christ in a way that you have never thought about him before the fact is christ can use any circumstance situation relationship anybody to bring you to him right and for him it's no afterthought he meticulously planned everything and he's so concerned about us that he did that he so loved us that he did that Right? Because he wanted to ensure that you would become a part of his family. Right? Hallelujah. And let me say, let me say, I, I've been in many spheres, especially since recently, where this thing about unforgiveness, we hear so much about it. And it's such a big hindrance to us as youth really discovering God's plan for our lives, right? Don't you realize when we decide not to forgive, right? That one that had hurt us so bad, right? When we decide not to forgive, we are stuck right there. And if we are not saved, we can't progress from that point without forgiveness, right? Forgiveness actually initiates that whole process of God changing your life around totally, right? Totally. When I say totally, I mean bring you into his family, you experiencing 
what we call that born again experience it's so awesome you have to experience it for yourself different ones have different experiences many have tried to really break it down but the best way to understand it is for you to experience it yourself and you have to come to that place where you're literally hunger and thirst for god and if you have unforgiveness in your heart you can't even begin to really hunger for god the way that he wants it to so you can be saved so you can be set free of that hurt right i know as young people many persons have hurt us right many persons have hurt us and we tend to just harbor that hurt in our hearts we keep it in our hearts and we decide we're not gonna forgive right it's hard for us a lot of the times you know some of us grew up with more influence than some so we are able to handle more than others right but many youths we never grew up with that um christian mother christian father a lot of us youths grew up in the ghetto and in other unfortunate situations right so definitely for unforgiveness can be a big hindrance and i'm gonna explore that a bit because god is really um, bringing a lot of revelation in in this season when it comes to unforgiveness right so let me ask you a question and i would have asked this question in, in other spheres and it's just so profound can we trust god with our hurt and trauma right all that trauma so you may have been molested raped you may have grew up in a, an abusive environment where it's physical abuse it's emotional abuse verbal abuse you know how it goes right because you have experienced it you know what i'm talking about and i'm definitely connecting with you on this right so the the first thing is though let us come to a place where we forgive ourselves right because a lot of these situations these traumatic situations it's not our fault right we didn't say in our hearts like i want to be raped i want to be molested i want to be boofed and battered by this guardian or this our, our mother our father or so forth right we never said we wanted to be verbally abused and be called our manner of evil to be called generation of vipers which you are not a lot of young persons you have been called a generation of vipers right but if you actually search the scriptures when god was using that he was trying to bring forth a point he was making a point he wasn't addressing us youths as being generation of vipers right actually children or our, our, our youthfulness reminds him of of the kingdom right we are encouraged to have a childlike spirit right no matter at what biological age we are in christ we are all god's children we are all considered god's children no matter how old we are so god loved that youthful spirit so it's important to forgive all those who hurt us right and definitely this would have been ministered in a situation and in a setting since recently and it's just so profound that we must forgive the previous generation right so our parents who have hurt us a guardian our teachers the previous generation those older folks right and one minister mentioned this right especially those of us who are firstborn children a lot of the times our parents you know they have to really discover how this parenting thing goes so a lot of the times we kind of experiments right they they never got everything right they made some mistakes right and even after other children came i mean life itself is a learning process 
And no matter how old we are, we are still learning and improving on some things. Right? So forgive the previous generation because yeah, they too had to learn some things for the first time. Right? And experience it. So don't have them up in your heart. And in order to actually progress, right, where the previous generation has had stopped, we have to forgive them. And what happens when we forgive them? Instead of starting where they started, right, in ministry or anything you can relate to, you actually start where they stopped so you can take the vision even further. You can take that ministry that you know God bless your father, your mother with, or your, your mentor, those persons you can relate to, right? You know God is speaking through them and God has given them a vision, a mandate. You can carry on their vision when you don't have unforgiveness in your heart. So I'm telling you this unforgiveness it's, it's, it's big. It's big on God's heart. And God definitely wants us to release that. Forgiveness and love are intertwined. Right? You cannot separate one from the other. And to become a part of God's family, we must agree with God and trust Him with our lives. So we as youths, I know, I know we have a lot of thoughts. Right? We think about many things. And it is true that God has a plan for us, right? But even many of us hearing that, we don't necessarily want that. We have some desires of our own, right? We have some things we want. But of course, God don't want us to go along that line, right? He wants us to actually embrace His will for our lives. Let me say this. The willingness to forgive is a requirement for us to receive the Holy Spirit. I think I would have mentioned that earlier. Right? So you have to be willing to forgive no matter how hard it seems, no matter how traumatic the situation is. We have to be willing to forgive. If you want to be saved. So that's for those who aren't saved. You have to be willing to forgive. And for those of us who are saved. If you have if you have unforgiveness in your heart. You can't move. You can't really minister. You can't really continue to walk in God's purpose. And have fellowship with God. And Him just bless other people through you like that. Right? You have to forgive. And let me mention this scripture. Colossians 1 verse 13 to 14. Right? And we are, we are coming to a close. Right? We are coming to a close. Colossians 13. Sorry, Colossians 1 reading from verse 13 to 14. Amplified version. For he has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness. This is speaking to those who are chosen. Those who will have been manifested in this earth as God's children. Those who have become a part of God's family. Right? For he has rescued us. And has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness. And has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. In whom we have redemption. Because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins. And the cancellation of sin's penalty. Hallelujah. So. I want to minister to those who aren't saved with this scripture. This can be you. Why not? This can be you. And as I said earlier, the fact that God is speaking to you right now, right? He's literally going through scriptures and trying to prove to you that 
You are not an afterthought. You were planned for. And in order to discover his plans, his will for you, which are so awesome, you have to choose him. You have to surrender your life to him. Right? Hallelujah. So you can be rescued. You can be drawn to God from the dominion of sin. The dominion of darkness. Right? Remember, when Adam sinned, the entire mankind was plunged into sin. Right? We are born in sin, sheep in iniquity, like David mentioned in, Sha in Psalms, right? So, as mentioned earlier in the message, God had to set a redemption plan in place because he knew all of this would happen. So, it's not when it happened that God started planning. He planned it out before any of this took place before the devil even decides say yeah i'm going to exalt myself above god and i need some worship too yeah god planned it all out that he would redeem us right that he would manifest us in the earth as a part of his family hallelujah so he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So you can be that. You can be transferred to the kingdom of Christ. Those of us who aren't saved. We can be redeemed because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of your sins. And of course, God will cancel sin's penalty just for you. Just so you can discover all that he has purposed for you to discover in him. Right? Because you were chosen to be a part of God's family. Accept the invitation to become a part of God's family today. And let me just take this time out to pray for you. So Lord, we give you glory and we thank you for all that has been said. Father, we thank you for speaking to your people, not with a spirit of, of condemnation. Lord, you're not shouting at us. All you did this morning or any time you're watching was just talk to us using your word. Your word spoke to us. Father, and Lord, all you want is for all your children to be manifested, right, in the earth as sons. You want all your children who you had chosen before time to come forth. Lord, and the way you do that is to minister your word. Lord, you, you send forth your servants, just like you are using me now, to just minister your word, to talk to your people. Lord, and you are all about love. You are full of love. So, Lord, I pray that your people may hear you, your youths, which you have chosen. Your youths, which you have called upon. Your word says young men or women. No matter who you are, you are called upon because you are strong, because God wants to use you. Right? So, Lord, I just bless you and put everything in your hands for you to have your way. Lord, be magnified as youths from all over surrender their hearts to you and step out of the kingdom of darkness and step into the kingdom of light. Therefore, becoming a part of your family, Lord, and just doing wonderful works according to the instructions you would give to these ones that have your Holy Spirit in them and have become one with you. So we bless you now, Lord, and we put everything in your hands 
in Jesus' name. Amen.